there we go so mr. Burnett we're now recording uh, on January 22nd uh, 2013 I just want to ask you a few questions uh, about farming I'm writing a story uh, called urban Nirvana it's about a family uh, that's based in Chicago but also has uh, some interest in a place called Big Muddy Saskatchewan and they are they have a ranch there it's a big ranch it's over 6,000 acres so pretty big maybe not as big as some of <coughs> some of the uh, the properties out there and it's grassland out there and so they're raising cattle and I was wondering if you could describe to me what it's like to get up in the morning and what you have to do as a, a beef rancher to, um, to, to make that work out there in the grasslands of the prairies. Well, to start with, you have to go to college. Have a college degree. Because with a college degree, if you want to buy cattle and so forth and have extra money, you can go to the government and buy it, but they want you to have a college degree to know financial, the circumstance in fin financing and all this kind of thing. That makes sense to me. Yeah, that's the start with. So they're not really going to lend you any money, say Farm Credit Corp, if, if you don't know what you're doing? No. You don't get any money unless you know what you're doing. That wasn't when I started. It was a little easier than yeah. that, but you ha had to have some backing anyway. Well then, if you have th this, that gives you an idea then on a financial basis to borrow money to buy buy your cattle. You got to and you're going to raise them on grass. And are you going to try to finish them on grass? If if not, you've got to sell them to somebody else to finish them. And finish them on what though? Corn. And and why do you go from grass to corn? Because grass is a, a product that just goes right through. Right. It doesn't put the, the, the solid weight on them like yeah, corn does. Right. And that's what you've got to have to do. So a big ranch like this out in Big Money, Saskatchewan would probably do both. Maybe do. Maybe they do. Some of them maybe don't grow corn. Maybe they just grow grass. Yeah. And something like that. Now, so so they they grow them on on grass and then they finish them as you said on, on corn. Yes. And now, when how do you know when when they're finished? What 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 are you looking for in your herd? Well, if I was looking for um, an animal that's finished, their tailbone <coughs> and their hip bone, if that's level, <coughs> right through, they're pretty well finished. But if that is dipped down. You can put another 400 pound on that animal <coughs> there to finish it. Wow. Now, once an animal is finished, what's the next step in the farm, in the ranch? Next step is get the right price to sell it. And, and, and in places like Alberta and I guess in Saskatchewan and, and other places in Canada, where do you take them? You put them on, on transports? You take them to the barn sale. You take them to the barn sale. Yes. And what do you do there? You take them to the barn sale, and the uh, ones that's buying this will give you the highest price. Okay. Like if if you're betting on it, yep. and, you, and you say that one is only worth 18 cents a pound, and I say to myself, I can pay 19. Yeah. Well, I'd bid 19. Okay. So there's a, a, a sale that's, that's going on, and so you sell your cattle there. You're trying to get the best price you can. Yes. And, um, and then what happens to the animals? The animals go to the slaughterhouse then, yeah, and be killed, and and the carcass carcass put up there and hung for so long, and then it's cut up and wrapped and frozen. Okay, and what do they do with the the um, the animal skin? I'm not just sure, but the animal skin. There's a place they sell. And is that? For leather? Yes. All right. So from, uh, um, you know, from uh, what kind of cattle would be farmed in the prairies? Uh, for, for Beef for cattle. Beef cattle. What kind of cattle would lo well, they be? Durham or Shorthorn or yeah. some of those beef, uh, beef, beef cattle. Beef cattle, not, right. Not dairy cattle. Not dairy cattle. No, no. Beef cattle. Beef cattle. They're quite different. Are they yes. bigger? Oh, yes. They're bigger and stronger and, uh, and they stay out in the cold and the like. They uh, lie out. When you think it's cold here, yeah. I know a farm where, the, where he has a good shed for the cattle, and the cattle are lying out on the side of the hill. No way. In the cold. 
How cold? 40, minus 40? Sure. Oh, my goodness. Now, what are some of the kinds of diseases that can happen to, say, uh, beef cattle? Well, they get foot rot. Mm -hmm. It's one thing. Is that because it's too wet? Sometimes it's too wet. Yeah. Well, get a cold or something, but uh, if they're out in the cold like that, they don't, as a rule, get a cold. I see. Okay. You know, there's diseases that I'm not familiar with. Right. But uh, it can happen. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, and and what are some of the risks that you take? I mean, I know Mr. Burnett, you know a lot about the economics of it. So, you know, your how long does it take to raise a beef cattle? Is it a two-year process, three-year process? Say about two years. Two years, and in that time, prices can fluctuate a lot. Well, you have to, you got to know when that calf is born what it should be worth in two years. I got to know how it's coming along all the time, just like interest on your money. Just like interest on your money. Yes. And so, uh, now, what about the breeding process? I mean, you have to have some bulls, I guess, right? Yes. And, and they, uh, how, I mean, is it done through insemination or is it done naturally? Well, in uh, those places, they let the bulls run with the cattle. Oh, they do, eh? Oh, yes. That's more fun for the bulls. Well, yes, but you've got to watch all the time and see what bull is giving you the best calves. I see. And if a bull is just giving you poor calves, yeah. you better pull them out right. get rid of him. Get rid of him. Yes, but then you've got to watch and not have a bull too long, too. Why is that? Well, you don't want the bull breeding its own uh, its own offspring. Oh, uh, okay. And so how long uh, would that be? I mean, how many generations is it? Well, if a bull has a, a bunch of heifer calves yeah. this year, yeah. you don't want that bull coming back in in two years and breeding them yeah. His daughters. It wouldn't be wouldn't be a real good idea, no, huh? They're not going to do well. No, they're not going to do well. Wow. Okay. So that's pretty complicated. Oh yes. Wow. Yeah, you got uh, got them separated, and you got then you got the steer calves. You got to castrate what, them. What's a steer calf? A steer calf is uh, a bull. But that's been castrated. Not uh, not castrated. Not castrated. Ca castrated is a steer. And castrated is a yeah, steer. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you castrate them? Well, you don't want a whole bunch of bulls running around. They'll do better if uh, if they're castrated and keep them quiet. Okay, keep them, that makes sense. We castrate yeah. our cats. Yes. You castrate your bulls to keep them quiet. Yes. And 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 what do you do with them? <coughs> what are they used for? Are they going to be sold as beef? Yes. They're okay. The ones that go for beef the fastest. Oh, they they do. Oh yes. But you will sell the the female heifers as well. The female heifers, if you get female heifers and they don't look like good ones to keep and breed next year yeah get rid of them and they would go for beef yes, they yes. would go for beef too They'd go through the barn sale. now do they ever mix a dairy farm with a beef farm or is that always separate it has to be separate yeah it has to be separate. very different operation oh yes very different yeah yes it's just like uh, if you had uh, trucks there drawing gravel you wouldn't take a, a half ton truck in that same line yeah no. The same, something the same. No, you sure wouldn't. Um, and and so if you were out there um, today in in big muddy Saskatchewan or somewhere in Alberta, would would it still be useful on some of these big ranches to be able to ride a horse, or is it mainly people now using four wheelers to kind of herd herd these animals? You're all good. Yeah, just uh, we're just uh, doing a re recording here. Just a couple more minutes. No, Your dad is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, well he's driving himself, so he can leave whenever. Oh, uh, is that okay? Yeah. All right, thanks again. A, a great job here. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Burnett. Uh, well, I tell you, with the four wheelers, you, when you shut them off, they're yep. gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the others, you're trotting around through the cattle, and uh, you've got to tie them or something when you go to leave them. Right. Feed them. Right. And the whole thing. And I think the, the other, if there's a calf out there with something wrong, you can take a trailer and bring the calf in. Right. Well, you can't with the horse. Can't with the horse. So you would think that pretty much the horses have g kind of now gone away and, and people are using four-wheelers and, and motorcycles now. Well, I'd say a lot of four-wheelers, but maybe yeah. I would say I never was in that business. Yeah. So I think horses are... Kind of passe. Pass, get around among the cattle and separate them. And so you would still use horses and you would use four. I think, four, by the looks of Yeah, things. I think you probably still would. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they can slip around. Yeah, they can slip around and yeah. separate them. And as you told me, sometimes you have to separate them because you don't want a bull breeding with his daughter. No, you got to separate them cattle and have them gone over here. Yeah. Then you've got to get all the steers, all the bull yep. calves in and castrate them. 
Yeah. And then they can go back on the grass until yep. a certain time, and then you got to separate them and get them away. Yep. Now, um, uh, it's not easy running a ranch, I, I, I imagine. It's physically demanding. Um, can, can women be effective uh, sure. ranchers, or, yeah. or just is it something only men can do? No, women can do it just the same as men. Is that right? Yes, because they can get to know the look of a cow just the same as me or, or somebody else. And they have the physical strength to do the work that's necessary. Well, they're not uh, doing a lot of work if they're on the grass. They have men maybe bailing hay and right. this sort of like, but the women could go out around. <coughs> they could be on horseback doing separating sure, my them. My wife up. was in the hospital and broke her uh, her hip. Yeah. In the other bed there was yeah. this uh, lady, mm -hmm. and she said I was out uh, west, and I see us we're out driving with this other lady. My husband died, and I just to get away, and they said help wanted. I went in. And I said, you were looking for help. What kind of help? Well, round up cattle and this, that, and the other thing. So, okay, I can drive a horse and this. So she hired along. She was there, she said, over a month and a half. She I see. really enjoyed it. Is that right? Oh, yes. Okay. But there's hills and the like. Yeah, Come yeah. onto a hill, the horse knows the hill. Oh, go. She said, oh. Yeah, the horse is going down yeah, the hill. I, I've been on a horse going down a hill. It's scary. And that kind of thing. Yeah. And then separating cattle. And you don't bring the cattle <coughs> in those big places into the barn. Yeah. They have big crowds there and you put them in. Yeah. Then the vet comes along and he's castrating or he's giving them a needle yeah. for yeah. this, that, or the other thing. And they're going through a shoot. Right. But she said you've got to be prepared for you see anything. I'll bet, yeah. Anything. But now, Mr. Burnett, um, uh, can you tell uh, uh, me how, how old are you now? Only eight, 83 and three quarters. 83 and three quarters, all right. And how long have you been uh, farming? Since you were all a boy, life. all your life. Yeah. And and uh, what what if you were to sort of say what was the kind of the best thing about the life you've lived as a as a farmer as a successful individual with you know a family how many children do you have again only sir? Nine so only, nine, well, only nine so far um you know what was the sort of if you look back on on, on the things you've done as a as a farmer a successful one what, what was the thing that you had most fun doing or are most proud of the most proud of being a businessman yes sir that's first shot and you've got to stand your ground to be a businessman. And you mentioned to me that you had a mentor who taught you a lot about business, but he wasn't a farmer. He was a man that bought cattle. And, and who was that? Up, Harry Leakin. Harry Leakin, yeah. And he come along, and he walked in, and I had five calves for sale because I was going to start the dairy. Yeah. <coughs> How much? I said $150. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. No. Come on out to the truck. He gave me a hundred dollar bill on my hand. He said, that'll buy the calves. No, I said, it won't buy the calves. He gave me another 20. He said, that'll do it. He says, I said, won't take it back and put it with the rest and you have enough. I stood there, I got the 150. He said, double that and put in your pocket quick. I put it in my pocket. He said, I want to tell you something. Today is your day to make a decision. How to buy and how to sell. When you see an animal, you got to say to yourself, what benefit is that animal to me? What can I pay for that animal? And that's the price. Okay. You say to the farmer, how much do you want? If he wants some exorbitant price, well, that's out of your price range. You can say no. I'll give you so much for that cow, for instance. If he wants to take it, okay, and if he doesn't, leave it. That's the way, because it's no use to you. Like buying a, a car, you wouldn't, or buying a truck, you wouldn't buy a big transport to, to go around, to go around like a, a half-ton truck. You get what I mean? I do. You have to know what you're buying. I went out and I wanted purebred cows. My father says, if you keep on with that, you're going to put yourself broke. All right. I bought purebred cows at the same price as I would buy a, a cow that wasn't purebred. What's the advantage of the purebred? Because I had the papers. And how does that help you? Well, it's just same as uh, 
if a man comes along to, to you and wanted to do something, and he says, I have a, a college, I was a college graduate, show me your papers. See what I mean? Yep. There you are. Okay. Now, Mr. Burnett, you know, uh, you hear a lot these days about farm gate marketing. You know, somebody's growing, uh, you know, berries, and, 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 and maybe it's commercially grown, but, you know, at the farm gate, you can go there and you can buy some berries from the, right from the... Cheaper. Cheaper from the farm than you can, say, from, you, you know, the, the, the mega store. Yeah. Um, but I don't suppose you could do farm gate marketing with beef, could you? Yes, there is a certain amount of it. How, how would you do that? How would that work? Well, a man comes in and he said, uh, would you have a calf to sell? The calf is about 200 pounds. Yeah. And uh, you say, well, in your head, the calf's worth so much a pound. The calf's worth so much a pound. Yeah. You can buy it. He has to take it to a slaughterhouse and get it killed. Yeah. And hung. Yeah. And wrapped. To get home. So farm gate marketing, uh, it, it, you know, like if you were like a really high end chef, you know, like some crazy yeah. chef who wanted, you know, grain fed beef, is that yes. possible? Yes. You could do grain fed yes. beef, yeah. And he just said, I'm only going to sell organic grain fed beef. He could go to a farmer uh, uh, like this, these people out on Big Five Ranch out in uh, Big Muddy, Saskatchewan, and say, okay, th this group of cattle, I, I like the looks of these, they're going to be grain fed and they're for me. Yeah. For my restaurant, yeah. he could do that. Yeah, and, but you could slaughter them on the ranch. You no. have to take them to a slaughterhouse. You can't just be slaughtering them he on has your to property. Them on the, it, uh, take them to a slaughterhouse, which is government and regulated, and they have to be inspected. So yes. it's government regulated. Yes. Yeah. So you can't just be shooting yeah. cattle on your property. <coughs> Same with milk. You can't sell. It. Lots of right. people come in to yeah. my farm and want yeah. milk. Yeah. And I said you can't. I can't sell milk because right. it has to go through the milk marketing board. Right. Well, they only want a little bit. Yeah. I don't care whether you only want that much, and if something happens, your uh, yeah, a finger your size child yeah. takes something and say, "What do you? Oh, I got milk from a farmer, and yeah. uh, she drank some of that milk. Oh, that's what's the farmer's name? So and so. Okay. Well, we'll have to treat them, and in the meantime, goes off in your secondary, calls the milk marketing board, such a farmer. Yeah, you're a so bit trouble. Wow. Your quota's gone. Your quota would be gone. Yeah. And and do they have quotas in, in beef farming? No, I don't no. suppose so. So no quotas. No. When I was president of the Federation of Agriculture for Ottawa Carlton, we tried that. Mm. But when you have cows, it's just like uh, if you had, uh, say, 10 mm -hmm. girls here working for you, mm -hmm. and you said, okay, I wish they all had boys, or they all had girls, mm -hmm. or something like that. And the ones that had the uh, had the boys, they're going. Well, you d they, you don't know whether they're going to have boys or girls till it comes, and same with cattle. And if you wanted to have a quota of uh, eight steer calves, yeah. God, I had five heifers, or eight. Oh, you'd be in trouble then. Yeah. I'd not. Yeah. And if I wanted to go and buy some from somebody else to fill up my quota. It wouldn't work. They're the same thing. Yeah, it makes sense. Now, now, Mr. Burnett, this is uh, the last question I have for you today. Um, uh, you, you had a lot of success. You, you, you were a businessman farmer, and, and you had a family of nine kids, and I've uh, met some of them, uh, great kids. Um, what was something, though, that you did wrong? If you look back and say, gee, you know, there's some things I did that were great, but here's one thing I did that was harebrained. What, what was the worst kind of nightmare thing that you did on the farm? Well, I followed the farmer so much that uh, sometimes you'll have a poor crop and the yeah. like. Yeah. But a lot of things I had great success with. Yeah, I know. I mean, because uh, I rented uh, uh, farms. Yeah. I rented farms and never had to pay any rent. Just cleaned them up and rented them. Perfect. And another thing, <coughs> uh, in my father's time, you when you put a field of grain in, when I started, mm -hmm. put a field of grain in. Mm -hmm. Well, if a big storm coming and broke it all down. Or a hailstorm or something. Yeah, it could happen, yeah. You're out of uh, grain. Correct. When I was on the Federation of Agriculture, we were picking up memberships, and I said to the boys one day, sitting there in a room like this, I said, why don't we have crop insurance? Right. Ah, don't be crazy. How would you ever get that? No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, I said, just a minute. Don't say that. Don't, please, don't say that to me. We're going to just talk about it. If you have you buy your car, your new car, you get insurance on your car. Absolutely. Why did you put insurance on the car? The whole thing is new. 
Yeah. Okay. You go along, and if you uh, would just say you had got crop insurance, and you had had uh, 25 acres of grain insured, or if you had 25 acres of corn insured. So, Mr. Burnett, uh, you were the pioneer behind crop insurance. That was the truth. I brought that up, and you heard all the year the crying. Because that's everywhere today. Yes, but the crying is up in Renfrew there. They have no money to buy this and no money to buy that. Did you pay crop insurance last year, or the year before, or the year before? Right. No, they didn't. That's why. So anyway, I started out to sell memberships. And I went into this place, and those four men mm -hmm. sitting around having a chat. It was a, a kind of an off day. I said about, would you like to have crop insurance? <coughs> Never heard tell of it. So I started explaining it to him. One fellow said, you know, I rent that other farm over there, and it's kind of a wet farm. Sometimes I have a real good crop, and sometimes not. So I put crop insurance on that farm, but I won't put crop insurance right. on my own. What did I say? Nothing. Oh, no, not a word. He's educating me. So, okay, I asked quite a few, and after we got talking about it, they said, yes, that would be a good idea. So we got it going. But you insured everything. Everything. Yeah, it's the same problem that Mr. Obama had when he was president, and uh, uh, still is president, and he wanted to bring insurance, uh, health insurance, and people can't cherry pick. You know, yeah. when you're young, I'm not going to insure myself, but when I'm old, I will. Yeah. And, and he said, no, you can't cherry pick. No. All right. But that's when we got it. How we, how we that's a fantastic story, Mr. Burnett. We had so many f uh, years there with real good crops. And people said I paid insurance. I paid two thousand dollars lots of years. Yeah. And I got never got a cent out of it. But, but the year that I yeah. this happened, I got the money. Well, Mr. Burnett I can't thank you <coughs> enough. This has been a wonderful interview. Uh, I am now an expert beef rancher, ready to try my hand at writing the story, but not actually doing it. Not actually doing it. <laughs> thank you, sir. Minute interview in total.